Welcome back to the Gentleman's Gazette. In today's video, we discuss a capsule wardrobe for men, what it is, we touch on the history, what its benefits are, and whether it's right for you or not. Of course, I also discuss my capsule wardrobe for fall, winter, and spring, summer, so you have a good starting point. <laughs> Capsule wardrobe is a term you hear all over the place, but first let's establish what the term actually means. Basically, it's a small collection of outfits with the sole purpose of maximizing the use of each item, meaning everything works well with one another, so you get a maximum number of outfits with a minimal wardrobe. A capsule wardrobe includes only the everyday essentials you have in your wardrobe, and the idea is that you have something that you could wear for three months exclusively. It follows the quality over quantity approach, and it's supposed to reduce the dissatisfaction with your wardrobe, even though you have a lot of items. Overall, a capsule wardrobe is a minimalist approach to clothing, and it does not include accessories. Personally, I love clothes, but I had to resort to a capsule wardrobe when I was traveling for 105 days around the world. Because of that, I had to carefully think what items am I going to wear, what climate zones will I be in, and then I could only choose what I had without buying anything more because we would travel all the time and having heavy luggage and overweight luggage is not fun to travel with. Chances are you've created your own capsule wardrobe whenever you traveled for an extended period of time. So the capsule wardrobe has been around since the 1970s and the phrase was actually coined by a boutique in London. In the 1980s, Donna Karen released a capsule collection that was geared towards women, and the idea was to have items that all work with one another. So why could a capsule wardrobe make sense for you? First of all, if you're gonna go on a longer trip or any trip at all, it's really good to have items that you can combine with one another because that gives you more options and you don't have to haul heavy stuff with you. It's also great for people who have a large closet and many items of clothing, yet they can't see the trees for the forest and they don't know what to wear. It can also be good for you if you wear the same things over and over again, or if you have three or four different versions of very similar items, such as a blazer, yet you're never entirely happy with each or any one of those items. So what are the big benefits of a capsule wardrobe? First of all, it's a very conscious process that forces you to think, and therefore you generally reach better results. Each item in your collection has a specific purpose and you have to check beforehand if you can wear it with one another or if it goes with existing items that you already have in your wardrobe. As a result, you take your clothes shopping a lot more seriously and as a result, you'll likely be a lot happier with your choices. Because everything works with one another, you bring down the cost per wear enormously. On the flip side, that means you can now invest in higher quality garments that cost more because you buy fewer of them. That also means you stop settling for garments that are just okay and you go for really, really good. On top of that, you learn how to utilize accessories to really change your look because at the end of the day, a pocket square, a bow tie or a tie are a lot less expensive, yet the look can be the same as if buying an entirely new suit. If you live in a big city where large closets and apartments are very expensive or if you just don't have enough closet space, a capsule wardrobe is a godsend because it significantly reduces the amount of space you need for your clothes. Also, you can have a hundred bow ties or ties that take up as much space as a single suit. So having a large number of accessories won't hinder you from having a really versatile wardrobe once you have that capsule collected. So how do you create a capsule wardrobe? First of all, choose a three month period because that's a good time frame. It's not too long, it's not too short, and it will help you to choose the right pieces. Initially, you look at what you already have in your wardrobe that you will like to wear and that you think you can combine with other pieces. Ideally, you do all of this two weeks before you actually need it, which means two weeks before the season starts, two weeks before your trip, or whatever that event is. Of course, if you go on a hiking trip, you need very different outfits than if you're gonna go to Vienna and you visit operas all day long. Rather than just going out and buying everything new, I suggest you focus on what you already have because you know what it looks like, you know what it feels like, you know what its shortcomings are and its benefits. Then fill in the gaps from there. 
store all the other clothing away or donate it to people in need. Force yourself to not wear anything outside of your capsule wardrobe. It makes you creative. And as I said before, accessories are not part of that. So that's where you really start creating your unique looks, always having that same jacket. So what does my personal capsule wardrobe look like? Basically, I decided I need about 37 items. Now, when I say a three-piece suit, that's already three items. For the full winter season, I would choose two three-piece suits, one in gray flannel and one in a small houndstooth, maybe in brown or gray and white. I would also go with a navy solid two-piece suit, a brown needlehead suit, or maybe a brown striped suit, choose one of them, and then maybe a mid-gray suit or something with a pattern, such as a nice classic Glen check or Prince of Wales check. On top of that, I would add two sport coats, definitely a tweed coat, maybe in a herringbone pattern, maybe in brown, and then maybe a navy blue flannel blazer, double-breasted with patch pockets and differing maybe blonde horn buttons, just so I have a different look from just my regular navy jacket for my suit. I'd add three vests, one maybe a burgundy doe skin, another one a bottle green, maybe velvet or a different fabric, maybe tweed, and then a sweater vest, also in a color that works well, such as camel, or gray maybe, or blue. Because it's cold outside, I would add a pea coat, which is a shorter coat, and you can learn more about that garment here, as well as a paletot, which is a stylish overcoat, maybe in a gray color with a black velvet color. That way it's formal. I can wear it with a tuxedo, but I can also wear it with any kind of suit and during the day. Obviously, a tuxedo is a very special item, and you'll have to decide if you need it or not, depending on the events you're gonna attend in the next three months. In terms of shirts, I suggest you go with eight basic ones, which includes a white shirt with a French cuff and a regular collar or something that suits your face, a light blue shirt, maybe with barrel cuffs, an Oxford shirt, definitely with barrel cuffs, an écru shirt, which you can wear with treats or more casual outfits. Also, you may want to invest in a twill shirt in a pastel color, such as pink or purple, green or yellow, simply because it adds a different note to outfits. For pants, I'd go with corduroys, maybe an olive green or brown. I'd definitely add a pair of gray flannel. If I have already a gray flannel suit, I'd skip that, maybe go with a doe skin or a pair of chinos. For sweaters, I'd go with a v-neck sweater because I wear a lot of ties. If you don't, you can get a round crew neck. Color-wise, I'd stick with burgundy or bottle green. You can also go with blues or grays or whatever you prefer, but I would also suggest you go with a cardigan because you can button it up. It's just a slightly different garment, yet it's very comfortable. And always make sure to go with a different color than what you chose for your sweater. For shoes, I'd go with three pairs. A black classic cap toe Oxford, then a mid-brown derby shoe and a burgundy loafer. To learn more about the specifics of these three shoes, please check out our in-depth video here. Because it's winter, I also want two pairs of boots and ideally you want to have a Chelsea boot and a Chaka boot. And to learn more about those, please check out our boot video here. Now, if you live or travel to a warmer climate, your capsule wardrobe may look entirely different. First of all, because it's warmer, I'd skip any type of three-piece suits and only go with two-piece suits. My picks would be a fresco suit, maybe in a mid-gray or something in blue, then a tropical worsted one that's in a different color, maybe slightly lighter, and a seersucker suit. To learn more about seersucker, please check out this guide here. Because it's a warmer climate, you can be more daring and you can have more sport coats. I suggest to go with a blue and white checked cotton sport coat, maybe a brown linen sport coat, something in green, also something of a mix, maybe with a silk blend, just to get a different texture. And you can get a coarser weave, such as a Panama weave, because it just provides a different look to your outfits. Ideally, you also want to have at least one checked item in there, such as a Glen check or an overcheck, one that is small, one that is bigger, so you don't just end up with solids. For more casual outings, I'd throw in a Harrington jacket, and you can learn more about that in our full-fledged guide here. Again, I would add eight dress shirts, however slightly differently. I would have open weave shirts that are really breathable in white, in light blue, only stick with very pastel -y colors because it works really well for summer. Instead of using all cotton, you can experiment with linen cotton blends or even some silk blends 
They're more coarse, they have a mottled look, they wrinkle in a different way, and they're just more casual and seasonally appropriate. For pants, I'd suggest you go with a Nantucket red pair of cotton trousers because it's very contrasty, it has a preppy feel. I'd go with maybe a beige seersucker pants if you already have a blue seersucker suit. I'd add a navy pair of slacks in solid color just for very office appropriate wear and in a tropical worsted because that's the perfect material for hot summers. And then I would add a mid blue pair of linen pants, which is also very versatile, but brighter in its color. Of course, you always want to throw in a khaki pair of chinos, because it goes with anything, you can dress it up or down, super versatile, you can learn more about it in this video here. If you wear shorts, go maybe with something like madras shorts, which would be my personal pick, then I would go with a needle head and maybe something else in linen. For my dress shoes, I would get three pairs, probably a plain Darby in a mid-brown or a Fulbrook in an oxblood brown or the other way around, as well as a tan light loafer, either penny loafer or tassel loafer, because those three colors are more seasonally appropriate rather than a black Oxford that wouldn't go so well with the other items in your spring-summer capsule wardrobe. Last but not least, I would add a pair of boat shoes because you can wear it barefoot, it's comfortable, it has a much more casual look, and for the same reason, maybe I'd add a pair of driving mocks, which you can wear driving or at a resort. To learn more about boat shoes, check out this video. To learn more about driving mocks, have a look here. Now, all these suggestions were just highly personalized to my tastes, and they may not work for you. If you want to learn more about it, please go to our full-fledged guide, where we have two additional wardrobes laid out for you that you can take as a foundation and then change things as you see fit. If you enjoyed this video, please give us a thumbs up, hit that little bell so videos like this come right to your inbox, and if you want to learn more about classic men's clothing and how you can look your best, please sign up to our email newsletter and you get lots of videos and articles for free.